Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure indeed, and it is my honor, to address you this evening as the inaugural speaker of the Brüsseler Mittwochgesellschaft. And of course, let me start by congratulating you on the establishment of this new forum here in Brussels and thanking you for your active participation in the online debate over the past few days that we already started. Particularly at a time of crisis, it is vital that policymakers engage in an open dialogue with business and work on common solutions. We need your input to start moving away from austerity considerations and achieve the much needed progress implementing the necessary policies and structural reforms for, for sustainable growth. This forum can become a valuable asset and I rely on your continued engagement. Alongside macroeconomic, financial and fiscal plans, now it is time to focus also on the real economy, the EU single market and its primary driving force, the European consumers. With consumer expenditure representing 56% of the EU GDP, a well-designed and well-implemented consumer policy that makes consumers feel safe and confident whenever they shop should not be seen as a burden or unnecessary burden or a luxury. Consumer policy is an economic policy. At a time of crisis, it is more than that. It is an economic recovery policy. It is one of the key tools at our disposal to help EU citizens, including the more vulnerable ones, to go through the economic crisis and to support their purchasing power, thus supporting the recovery process. In your online contributions, many of you stress the need to adapt consumer policy to the needs of our times complex supply chain and the ever-growing global market and the digital revolution. With this objective, the Commission last year set out, out a comprehensive framework for consumer policy in the years to come, the European Consumer Agenda. And with this as a starting point, I have set my priorities for the coming months. I want to use though limited time remaining until the end of this Commission's mandate to in the most efficient way for achieving concrete benefits for consumers. First, I am determined to ensure effective implementation of recently adopted consumers' legislation. Second, I will seek to bring pending proposals to a successful completion in the Parliament and in the Council. And finally, I will focus on improving the enforcement of existing legislation and let, helping consumers reap tangible benefits from existing rights. In June, the new European Directive on Alternative Dispute Resolution and the Regulation on Online Dispute Resolution were adopted by the European Parliament and the Council. These new rules will allow European consumers and traders to settle their disputes in virtually every retail sector in an easy, fast and efficient way through quality ADR procedures. Providing consumers with easy and effective recourse to uh, redress when something goes wrong with the purchase, it is a key enabling factor for cross-border commerce and e-commerce in particular. It is therefore one of my immediate priorities to set up a well-functioning online dispute, dispute resolution platform available to all EU citizens in their own languages. I was pleased to see in the online forum that the value of this new tool is already acknowledged. I'm also determined to take forward the recent Commission's recommendation on collective redress, which complements uh, this collective redress actually complements the out-of-court resolution 
whilst fully respecting the member states' legal traditions. I count on traders to support these measures. After all, finding swift and satisfactory solutions to disputes and helping consumers feel more confident shopping abroad and online is clearly in businesses' commercial interest. As regards pending legislation, we have two important proposals in the field of product safety and medical devices, which I wish to see adopted by the middle of next year, which means by the end of the mandate of this European Parliament. I know that uh, strict safety rules are sometimes viewed as a burden by traders, but I was pleased to see from your online contrib contributions that this burden is recognized as justified. My position on this is clear. No compromise on safety. It is the essential minimum, both to protect the consumers against dangerous products and to unlock the potential of cross-border commerce by ensuring that safety rules are enforced uniformly, uniformly across the European Union. The package on product safety and market surveillance, once adopted, will enable better identification and improved traceability of products by requiring the name and address of the manufacturer and an indication of where the products were made. The proposal lays down clear requirements for all relevant economic actors in the supply chain. It also seeks to eliminate overlaps and inconsistencies in the way in which member states carry out their enforcement activities. Similarly, the proposals for the revision of EU legislation on medical devices have been carefully calibrated to ensure the highest level of patient and consumer safety, whilst taking into account the need of medical devices manufacturers, who are mostly European SMEs. There is no need for me to explain why businesses, and by that, of course, I mean not only retailers, but also manufacturers, importers, and distributors, have a clear interest in ensuring consumer safety. Nothing can harm a trader's reputation more than a product that puts their consumers at risk. I therefore count very much on your cooperation and support in our efforts to strengthen European safety standards. Another piece of legislation which I think merits to be adopted as quickly as possible is the recent proposal on payment accounts. In today's world, access to basic payment services is one of the preconditions for consumers to participate in the single market, including, of course, e-commerce. But around 58 million consumers in the EU still do not have a payment account. In this context, in May, the Commission published its proposal for a directive on the transparency and comparability of payment account fees, payment account switching, and access to a basic payment account. Once this proposal becomes law, it will enable consumers to benefit from offers across the EU and take advantage of the competitive prices they find online. Consequently, it will also allow retailers to reach a broader customer base. My third key priority will be to make better use of existing consumer legislation through two parallel work streams. First, promoting better enforcement, and then assisting consumers to obtain tangible benefits from existing rights. Europe prides itself for proving its citizens with one of the most powerful sets of consumer rights worldwide. However, rights which are not properly enforced are of no use to consumers. Also, for traders, stronger and more consistent enforcement is necessary to establish a level playing field and reward businesses who play by the rules 
by eliminating unfair competition from those who don't. Working alongside national enforcement authorities since 2007, the Commission has checked the compliance of commercial websites with consumer law in areas such as airline tickets, sales of electronic goods, and digital content, content downloads. These pan-European checks, the so-called sweeps, make customers and traders better aware of their rights and obligations and help to ensure a more consistent application of the rules. I plan to continue such actions, streamlining the process and making better use of the sweep's findings. I also want to further strengthen cooperation among national enforcement authorities on the basis of already existing structures, particularly in those cases where consumers in various member states are faced with the same problems, sometimes resulting from the practices of a single group of companies. Moving forward, I intend to concentrate on the enforcement of the Unfair Commercial Practices Directive in areas linked to travel services, children's online games, telecoms and energy. I'm also committed to make sure that consumers can benefit from harmonized provisions in the new Consumer Rights Directive, as from the first day. In the context of the ongoing review of the Consumer Protection Cooperation Framework, I want to lay the ground for shaping a better enforcement capacity fit for the challenges of the future. We will soon launch a public consultation on this matter. Your contribution would be valuable to help us identify where inefficiencies currently lie from the trader's perspective and how we could address them. Finally, let me explain briefly what I mean by assisting consumers in tapping the uh, potential benefits of existing rights. I saw that several amongst you were concerned about the risk of overregulating in uh, your online co contributions. And I am certainly not in favor of establishing new rules if these are not truly necessary. I'm convinced that the EU regulatory framework that is already in place has the potential to deliver great tangible benefits to consumers. But sometimes these do not materialize. In many cases, this is simply due to a resistance to change from the side of traders, but also consumers. Often a few simple actions are enough to make a difference. Raising consumers' awareness about their rights, encouraging them to look for the tariff plan that best suits their individual needs, making it easier for them to switch between service providers. Let's take the example of energy. With the liberalization of the energy sector, consumers now have the option to choose between different energy providers. However, complex offers can often be intimidating for consumers who hesitate to switch. Recent initiatives to promote collective switching in some member states have shown that significant savings for consumers can be achieved without further regulatory interventions. In the broader context of bringing more transparency and competition to the market, my services have also initiated a dialogue with stakeholders to improve the reliability of comparison website and online users' reviews. Building on the report of the multi-stakeholder dialogue on comparison tools, which was presented earlier this year, I now plan to launch an in-depth study to see how the stakeholders' recommendations can best be put into practice. Before I conclude, I would like to stress the individual role that business can play in helping us bring to forward all of the actions I have mentioned so far. Retailers have the great privilege and the great responsibility of being in daily direct contact with European citizens. 
You are best placed to help us understand consumers' real needs and expectations. And I invite you to become my partners in ensuring that consumer rights do not just exist on paper. An area where we could together achieve concrete results with little effort is consumer information. Help me make consumer rights more visible by indicating them clearly both in stores and online and facilitating consumers who wish to exercise them. I can also see a key role for industry in our efforts to improve safety even further by helping us collect more systematically relevant data about defect products you discover in your stores. These are a few initial ideas from my side, but of course, I now look forward to hearing yours. I hope that today's discussion will be the start of an enduring joint effort to shape a single market that truly works for European consumers. Thank you very much for this initial attention and we shall now continue the most interesting part of this evening, our discussion, our debate, our joint con contribution to consumer policy. Thank you.